Hi, today I want to talk about a rifle that's becoming one of my new favorite rifles. Maybe be even becoming my new go-to rifle. Love my ARs, but this rifle, the SCAR 17S, uh, it's hard to beat. Uh, this is going to be the first of three videos that I'm going to do on the, on the SCAR 17. Uh, this first one, obviously, I'm going to talk about the specs of the rifle, what I like about it, what I didn't like about it. What I've had to change on it. Uh, the second one is going to be a shooting video. Me on the range showing you some accuracy, potential of the rifle, um, recoil, all the other good stuff about the rifle. Um, third and last video, maybe for now, third and last video will be about the maintenance and takedown of this rifle, uh, which is amazingly simple. So a little, about, a little bit about the SCAR 17S. Um, SCAR stands for Special Operations Forces Combat Assault Rifle. Um, the civilian mer version, of course, has the S. That's why it's the 17S. The military version is the SCAR H or SCAR Heavy. That's a 308, 7.62 by 51. The SCAR uh, 16 or SCAR 16S for the civilian version, some automatic version. In the military, they refer to it as, the, it's referred to as the, or in the military version, rather, it's referred to as the uh, SCAR Light or SCAR L. Uh, originally, it was produced in uh, 2004, uh, went into service in 2009 uh, with some operational units in the 75th Ranger Battalion. Um, as for dates, I didn't research it overly hard. That's, of course, what's available on Wikipedia, and I'm sure it's, always true and correct. So a little bit about the general specs. It is of course a semi-automatic version, a semi-automatic rifle, a short stroke gas piston, has a rotating locking bolt. Uh, the, on this rifle, interestingly enough, the upper receiver, this upper part right here, is the registerable part. Here's the serial number right here. Uh, it has adjust, and of course it has adjusting um, uh, Front and rear sights. I'm sorry, adjusting and folding uh, rear front and rear sights. The um, uh, I obviously don't use mine much. Uh, again, it has, or and also it has a uh, hammer forged chrome line, fully free floating barrel, uh, which helps with accuracy and um, chrome lining gives a better. Tolerances for some ammo, corrosive ammo, which I don't know there's a whole lot of. I don't use it anyway, so it's not a big issue. The, Scott, the stock on this rifle is telescoping. And if you don't like my, my cycling the action or um, playing with a rifle, sorry, this video is going to have a lot of it. Um, it has a telescoping stock, so it has extended version, the collapsed version. The cheek riser, the cheek piece, is adjustable up and down, which is useful if you're going iron sights versus an optic. Uh, it also comes with the A2 grip, which I got rid of because I hate, 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 hate the A2 grip. Never liked it. Um, the operating controls are ambidextrous. You, uh, this, of course, is a California neutered version, which means when I leave the state and take classes out of state, or maybe if I someday move, which is whatever, uh, I can remove that little bullet button abomination that it forces us to put on here. Um, but it does have... Uh, ambidextrous um, mag releases both sides over here. Um, uh, safety is ambidextrous on both sides. Um, enlarged trigger guard is what they bill, and I don't see it as being overly enlarged, but it allows you to use um, gloves. With gloves hands, it's supposed to work better. I don't think it's all that enlarged myself, but that's how they bill it. Has a uh, composite polymer trigger group or trigger module. What they call it module. They list the magazines as um, uh, either aluminum or steel, and I I think on the at least on the Scar 17, I know these mags are, are steel mags, so I assume the 16 has the um, Aluminum Max, use AR Max. So, uh, nice thing about this rifle is it comes in at a hefty 7.9 pounds, and I say that very satirically, 17 pounds. I'm sorry, did I, 
How about 7.9 pounds? Uh, comes in at a very light 7.9 pounds, which is really a great weight on a rifle, a 308 caliber rifle. Um, extended, it has 38.5 uh, inches extended, 36 with the stock fully collapsed as it is now. Uh, with the stock folded, it comes in at um, 29 inches, about 29 inches. The uh, it has a uh, uh, 16 and a quarter inch length barrel. They do have a. Um, they say that they have a 20 inch, or they're going to come out with a 20 inch. I haven't seen it. I haven't heard about it. Um, yeah, so maybe someday somewhere it'll have a 17 inch, or I'm sorry, 20 inch barrel. And of course, like I said, it's 7.62 by 51, or more commonly referred to as a 308 round. Um, yeah, 20 inch barrel, hold your breath. That might show up someday. Um, uh, I think they've come out. I haven't seen one in person, but they've come out with the Mark 20 SSR or sniper, uh, support rifle, which has the 20 inch and is, um, made for accurized, uh, accurized shooting. They generally tend to run about 2,800 bucks plus or minus a couple bucks, uh, full retail. Um, Comes in flat dark earth, or what I like to refer to as their tricolor rifles. I don't like it. I got the, the receiver is a different color from the lower receiver. Uh, the stock's a different color. It's just all a bunch of, it, like I said, about three different colors it comes in. Uh, I prefer the black. Uh, it's easier to match accessories to it. If I want to, I can always um, Cerakote the rifle to whatever color I want to um, turn it into. Okay, so enough about the specs. Let's go on to my rifle, this one specifically, and what I love so much about it. Um, I've wanted to get a 7.62 by 51 or a 308 caliber rifle for a while. I've had the FNFAL. I've had uh, um, a couple M1As. Um, neither one of them really fit what I wanted out of the rifle. So I got rid of them. Yeah, I've horse trade rifles a lot. Uh, this one doesn't look like it'll be getting rid of anytime soon. The... Uh, uh, yeah, so I've been looking for a 308. This one came along, and so, gosh, I just had to get it. I love this rifle. It's a great rifle. It's very light, like I said, 7.9 pounds without all the accessories on it. Um, so far, this one has been very reliable for me. I haven't had it that long, maybe a couple months, uh, but I've had it for a while, not too long. Um, only got about 5,000 rounds for it so far. I want to take it through a five-day class, see how it holds up. Um, so far, out of those 500 rounds, I've had zero malfunctions. Uh, aside from the very first round I fired, which was user-induced, and I'll get into that in a bit. Um, like I said, I'm like, not sure if I said it yet, but it is a very accurate rifle. Uh, for its weight and size, it's surprisingly accurate. Um, I'll demonstrate the accuracy potential of it more in the in the shooting video that I'll do for this in this series. All right, starting at the back here, uh, just the length of pole, um, which is really nice. Like I said, if you're wearing body armor, um, I like it extended out um, to about a, the um, one or two clicks, but it or in one or two clicks from the first, lo longest extension. Um, but with just a, uh, it just fits well. It's, like I said, the adjustability is nice. The adjustable cheek riser, um, the billet is adjustable. It's basically down or up. So it's either, there's two two positions, down or up. Uh, it does work well if you're going iron sights versus optics. Uh, I didn't like the original um, sling mounts that this rifle comes with. It comes with little loops right here and right here that you can put the clips through. Didn't like it. Got the, uh, I had a Magpul MS3 stock, or sling rather, um, that allowed me to clip into it, but it was really, I, I didn't like it, wasn't any good. So I changed that out, um, put on a, a, a GG and G adapter in the rear. So I've got the QD mount back here and then, um, yeah, an expensive, and I say that it's not, not expensive, the, uh, UTG mount up in the front, which is give me a problem right now, uh, UTG angled mount. So it, allows it to rest against my body a little bit better. Um, and I use, of course, this my MS4 sling, which I've become a 
big supporter of. And if you know me, you can see the irony in that because it is a Magpul design. And you'll find there's a couple of Magpul things on here. Uh, so the sling mounts are new. Uh, like I said, I do not like the A2 grip, so I modified it out. Or I changed it with the uh, MIAD grips from Magpul. I had to modify them, uh, adjust them a little bit, modify them back here on the back strap. Um, not that hard to do. Grab a, a 410 shotgun shell, wrap it with um, sandpaper, and just kind of smooth it down. Uh, gets rid of the gap here. Makes it much more comfortable. Again, not hard. Takes all of maybe five minutes if you go slow. Um, let's move on up to the scope. I decided on this one. I just got something I had laying around, a, a relatively inexpensive scope. It's the Millet Tactical DMS-2. One to six power with a 24 millimeter objective. Uh, it does have a lit reticle, which is kind of interesting. I like. Not sure I'll use it much, but I like it. Um, has a 30 millimeter tube. I've got what are these Burris? I think these are the Burris uh, uh, quick detach uh, rings. Uh, the scope is uh, waterproof, shockproof. It has a built-in drop or built uh, BDC compensator built-in drop compensator for uh, 556 obviously it's 308 got over that um, I'll, I, not a big issue for me uh, like I said with the scope no issue so far I really like it um, has an interesting recoil impulse that which supposedly some say uh, can be dangerous or damaging to a scope I haven't had zero issues with this scope um, so I don't see it as being an issue at all uh, one thing I'll get to a little bit uh, something pros and cons of the rifle has a reciprocating charging handle. Um, some people have had issues with the reciprocating charging handle and the and the scope mounts. Um, there's a couple of solutions for it. You can actually switch the charging handle to the other side really easily, very easy. Maintenance video will show that. Uh, the uh, you can also flip your scope around so the QD mounts are on the other side. It's smooth on the ins on the uh, left left hand side of the rifle. Not a big issue for me. Uh, like I said, the first round I fired out of this rifle is actually not I'm sorry, not this rifle, but a friend's um, Scar 17. Um, first round I fired, I grabbed the stock or the the magwell like this. Uh, as the bolt retracted, it um, nailed my thumb pretty hard, induced a malfunction. And broke my fingernail, which didn't bother me because whatever. Um, but yeah, after that, I put on this uh, my another one of uh, Tango Down Stubby QD uh, vertical foregrip solved the problem, no issues. Now when I grab the rifle, it's a it's a matter of just grabbing forward here, and everything fits. It doesn't have any issues, so that works. I don't my thumb didn't get involved in there anymore. Um, uh, so we got the QD or the uh, stubby grip. You, you, that's pretty much it as far as accessories that I put on this rifle because I don't really think it really needs a whole lot. You can change out the hand of defense is making a low receiver that's a alloy metal. That a lot of people are praising. I don't know if it's good or bad. It does take the uh, more standard grip, uh, magazines. I've already got a half a dozen, six or eight mags for it, so I'm not overly concerned about that. Um, I'm going to leave it stock until it bothers me so much that I have to get rid of it. So far, I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I am thinking about doing a an angled charging handle, so it angles down a little bit. Uh, so instead of coming straight out, it'll come down off to this down a little bit, allow me to grab it a little bit easier. But again, yeah. You know, also, you can consider mounting it on the, the right side of the stock. And it'll be similar if you're familiar, if you shoot a lot of, uh, like the AK-47, you reach up, you grab the, the um, charging handle with your sport side hand. Um, yeah, not a, it, it is a, a little bit of lear learning evolution, but it's not hard to get over. Uh, let's talk a little bit about pros of it. Like I said, it's a great rifle. I really like this rifle. The weight is one of the biggest things about it. Uh, very reliable for me. I've had zero issues. Very accurate. Um, the recoil is a, a very, it's kind of a soft shooting recoil. I really like the recoil impulse on this, the recoil, the felt recoil. Um, 
Obviously, it's a bit more than a 5.56, an AR rifle, but I'd kind of put it on par with like an AK-47, similar sort of recoil to it. Not bad at all, especially when you're shooting a 308 caliber rifle. Um, there are so many different people making accessories for these now. Accessories are very easy to find. Um, they get a little bit pricey, which I guess could put a, uh, make that a, um, a con on this, but for the most part, the accessories are so, so many available. I really like the ergonomics of the rifle. Um, oops. Uh, the ergonomics on this rifle make it very easy to uh, um, manipulate all the functions on it. Um, everything about it, just a fun rifle to hold, comfortable to shoot, uh, comfortable to sling. I do kind of flop back and forth between using this, this GG and G uh, mount right at the back of the receiver versus rolling it around the uh, mounting this the sling right here in the loop on the stock and I think I'm probably going to go back to that because I don't like how the, the stock rolls away from my body um, and then of course it looks cool it looks really cool um, call it a it's tactical right you look all the looks really cool um, it has a an, again, another pro on the rifle is uh, very hard hitting around 308 is known for its ability to stop problems um, so I like the 308 caliber round uh, easy to disassemble again I'll get to that in the disassembly portion of this series um, that makes it really easy to do uh, there are plenty of mounting points for accessories uh, mount lights on the side you got a full rail up here to mount stuff on if you want to get really creative um, charging in or the vertical grip on the bottom of course like I said which is one that I would do on it because I think that's important for me. It has been important. Um, you've got accessory rails on both sides. So right or left-handed, you've got mounting points. <clears throat> um, yeah, lots. So those are the cons. Uh, are the pros con on the rifle, but not so great about the rifle. Uh, of course, one you can't ignore would be the price. Um, comes out a little over three uh, $3,000 after tax registration, all the other stupid stuff, and then the accessories you put on it. But you're looking at about, you're going to spend about three grand on this rifle right out of the bat. Uh, right off the bat. Uh, like I said, some will complain about the charging handle. It's a learning issue. I don't think it's that important. Uh, angled charging handle will solve the problem for most people. Put it on the uh, right side of the rifle, everything works. You know, just, again, it's a, a matter of learning it. It does, the, the barrel... Six, uh, 16 point two five inches long um, it has a one in 12 twist one uh, one revolution in 12 inch revolution uh, twist rate I actually think that's longer than it needs to be I would like to see him do it like a one one and nine or one in ten probably one in ten um, it generally prefers for accuracy wise the lighter rounds the you know 150 to 165 168. Um, once you get up into the 174, 175s or better, um, I don't think it stabilizes them quite as well. However, having said that, it's not a, um, it's a, it's a very accurate rifle, but it's not a precision rifle. Therefore, how important is that really? You know what I mean? Is it a, um, yeah, it's not a precision rifle. So. Yeah, I think for what you're looking at on this rifle, easy enough to hit 600 meters without a um, five, or, five to 600 meters with with standard ammo. I don't think you have an issue. Uh, con on it, uh, proprietary magazines. Another bad thing about it has proprietary mags. Just buy some extra mags. They're running 40 or 50 bucks. Yeah, they're not cheap like the AR mags are, but the quality mags will last you for a long time. Buy a half dozen, dozen, be happy, be done. Um, if you got three grand to spend on the rifle, mags aren't a big issue. Buy some extra mags. Uh, ammo is heavier with the 7.62 uh, versus the 5.56, so you have less carrying capacity, mag capacity. Um, again, pro or con. Uh, cost of accessories is a bit high. The accessories uh, cost quite a bit. Um, uh, lower receiver, the replacement lower receiver runs you about 300 bucks. You have a replacement stock similar to the ACR stock. Again, you're looking almost 300 bucks 250 bucks so yeah do with what you want um sling mounts like i said i wasn't a big fan of so you get some replacements 
Um, A2 grip, A, A2 grip, I really, really, really do not like the A2 grip. So uh, that's a big con for me, but it cost me 35 bucks in about 15 minutes to change it out and modify this one. Uh, some don't like the trigger, think it's a little bit too heavy. Again, uh, on a combat rifle or a, a, just a fun rifle to plank with, I don't think it's an issue. It's easy to get over. Um, like I said, it's not a precision rifle. If I were going to get, if I were you know, try and turn this into a pre precision rifle, Timony triggers or Geisley triggers obviously might be a benefit. But again, you're talking another couple hundred bucks, or two or three hundred bucks for those trigger groups, and it's not a precision rifle. Um, one other thing I hear a lot of people complaining about is the uh, exposed barrel because some people really like to be able to do the. Uh, um, you know, grip the gun way out here when they're shooting it. Let me give you a better shot of that. Like this, way out here, grabbing the end of the rope. Obviously, that's not going to feel too good. I'm not a big fan of that. I've always shot either grabbing the magwell or just forward of the magwell. Um, and that, it's, get yourself holding somebody at gunpoint for a, for any length of time. And I can sit here all day long. My, my bone muscles support against my body. I can sit here and I can hold somebody at gunpoint until the cavalry arrives without a problem. So again, I guess I, it's dependent on your mission, but I don't I don't shoot holding the gun way out, so it doesn't bother me in the least. Uh, as a matter of fact, I like it. They do make a couple of um, add-on stock pieces that'll extend it way out if you really want that. I just don't see that much of a benefit in it. Uh, so, like I said. It, one of the other things, I'm sorry, one of the things I meant to bring up, um, I know I forgot something. Um, yeah. The, the accuracy of the rifle, like I said, if that's a big issue for you, uh, you know, I, I don't have a, I'm not, not, doesn't bother me that much. Um, overall, it's a great rifle. I'm very happy with it. It's one that I'm definitely going to hold, hold on to. It may become, in all honesty, my go-to rifle uh, just because of the... Oh, one of the other cons to it, of course, is 762 by 51 which is one of the reasons I bought it. However, price of ammo is uh, significantly more expensive than a 5.56. So, yeah, it's going to cost you a little bit more. Um, all, everything I've added onto this rifle, my accessories, you'll find them below in the show notes. I'll post links for them all and whatever else I think of, I'll toss down in there too. Um, so if you like the video, uh, like us or follow us on Facebook. Uh, I'll put a link on that down there too. Um, follow us on Facebook. We get the information out as often as we can. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you would, please. I'd appreciate it. That helps us out a lot. And always remember, hope is not a strategy.